Court arguments began Thursday over Wyoming's abortion ban. Jackson residents accused the city of lying about an affordable housing project. And it's not just you. This time of year, Wyoming really blows. We'll take a look at these stories and more from Wyoming's largest news organization. I'm Andrew Rossi, in for Wendy Core with Cowboys State Daily. During a five-hour hearing in Teton County District Court Thursday, Wyoming's leadership sparred with pro-choice women and organizations while both sides pressed for a ruling from Judge Melissa Owens on Wyoming's two abortion bans. Cowboy State Daily's Claire McFarland said both sides asked Owens to dismiss the other side's case and issue a summary judgment in their favor. The state is saying the plaintiffs don't have a case. They failed to assert these constitutional rights are connected to abortion. Whereas the plaintiffs are saying the state doesn't have a case. They don't have a leg to stand on because of all these constitutional rights. Owens said there was no way she'd be ruling from the bench that day because of the complex constitutional issues involved in the case. A ruling is expected sometime in the next few weeks. Last week, the State Loan and Investment Board approved a $1.25 million federal grant to help build a 48-unit affordable housing apartment complex in Jackson on city-owned land at the Teton County Fairgrounds. Jackson residents testified against the project. Cowboy State Daily's Leo Wolfson says residents claim the city isn't being truthful about the way it's handled the project, and they're concerned today's affordable housing will become tomorrow's luxury housing. There's federal and state requirements on the project, but only for about 30 to 45 years. They worry that there's a Pandora's box that can open at that time, maybe even sooner. There's been instances in the past, affordable housing properties that have been flipped and sold at fair market rate. So it's not a totally ridiculous speculative position for them to be making. Ranchers in several Wyoming counties filed $7 million in claims to the Farm Service Agency for livestock losses last winter. Estimates show that nearly 15,000 head of cattle, sheep, and goats were lost. Cowboy State Daily's John Thompson said the farmers will receive the full value of their claims, but some losses can't be monetarily remedied. They will get paid. That's money that's been promised to them. But there was a lot more loss there than what you can really account for, because when a cow dies, you lost the value of the cow and the calf. That's an extra $1,400 that comes out of that ranch's bottom line. Ranchers will have another 60 days into 2024 to file claims for last year's livestock losses. I'll be back with more news right after this. The weather is turning oh so frightful this time of year, but those excavation projects, they will persevere. I'm Jan Warren for One Call of Wyoming, here to remind you that no matter how big or how small your digging project is, contacting 811 two full business days before you begin is required by state law. So stay safe unwrapping presents, not utility lines. From all of us at One Call of Wyoming, happy holidays. A Warland man accused of having a modified Glock 9mm pistol has been charged by a Wyoming grand jury. 48-year-old Stephen Schobert pleaded not guilty to two firearms charges in the U.S. District Court for Wyoming in Casper on Tuesday. Cowboy State Daily's Claire McFarland says Schobert faces serious penalties if convicted. Up to 20 years, 10 years on each possession count, one alleging that he had a Glock converted to fire several rounds with one pull of the trigger, and another alleging that he had a short-barreled rifle that was not registered. The National Firearms Act requires people to register short-barreled rifles. That's a vestige of the gangster days of the 20s and 30s and persists today. Schobert is currently detained in federal custody after findings that he may flee justice or pose a safety risk to the community. And Wyoming is always windy, but many people feel the worst of the wind in winter. But it doesn't just feel that way, it is that way. Cowboy State Daily meteorologist Don Day says Wyoming's high elevation and mid-latitude location in the gaps of many mountain ranges already makes it a natural wind tunnel. But the wind actually is worse for wear and Wyoming during the winter. The windiest months are without a doubt in Wyoming, December through March is when you see the highest winds. It's a function of season, a function of latitude, and it's a function of topography. And that's today's news. Find the full stories and a free digital subscription on CowboysStateDaily.com. I'm Andrew Rossi, in for Wendy Core for Cowboys State Daily.